Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and I'm very happy to have some special guests with us here today. Uh, state champion, Nolansville volleyball team, back-to-back -back champions, I would add to that. Uh, two state championships for a school that's only been around for a few years, both in volleyball. We're here with head coach Brett Young and state championship MVP and senior, Ms. Lauren Starkey. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Darren. Glad to be here with you. Last year, you won the first state championship, as I mentioned, at Nolensville, and now you repeat as champions. Uh, that had to be the goal. Lauren, coming into the season, that was the goal to be repeat champions, right? Yes, that was our goal from the first practice in the summer, our first preseason training. Um, the goal immediately was just to try to get that back-to-back -back championship. Coach Young, how did you, because I remember we talked about last year, in fact, it was during uh, this particular show you were in with uh, last year's MVP, Avery Young, and we were talking about, we're going to have a big target on our back. Uh, we got everybody back. We know that's going to be the expectation that we win another state championship. We're going to be the hunted, so to speak, uh, not necessarily the hunter. Uh, how did you go about maybe taking that pressure off or did you guys just embrace it? Well, it definitely had a different feel this year. Um, you know, we felt last year, we knew we were a good team. We knew we deserved to be where we were. But you're right. We, we were able, uh, in, in a lot of ways, I felt like, to kind of sneak up on some people. Um, that wasn't the case this year. Uh, you know, when you win a state championship, and like you said, you're fortunate enough to, to virtually bring back your entire roster, we knew um, we, we weren't really going to be able to play that underdog card and, uh, and sneak up on anybody again. So I think the biggest thing is we just embraced it. Um, you know, we were – in my opinion, a, a confident team. Uh, we, we've done a great job, though, of, of keeping our head down, uh, doing, doing what we're supposed to do in terms of taking care of business. And, uh, you know, Lauren and, and the seniors have such a huge part in that uh, in leading us in the right direction. So it was definitely a different feeling this year uh, with, with how we had to approach it, knowing that people knew who we were and we were going to get their best shot pretty much every time we played somebody. Lauren, any, did you feel any pressure uh, during the year or did you kind of block that out? Was there pressure thinking about, hey, people are expecting us to repeat as champions? Um, there was definitely a little bit of pressure. I think what kind of got us through it and what made us not think about the pressure as much is we just always reminded ourselves like kind of, you know, just one day at a time, one game at a time. Um, Cause you know, getting to state takes so long. You go through districts, regionals, sub-state. So I think, Yes, it was our end goal, but I think to kind of relieve ourselves of the pressure, we just took it one game at a time and we just enjoyed, you know, every moment that we had out on the court with each other. Very well said. Uh, sounds like something your coach might have said and as a leader on the team, uh, I know he appreciates hearing that too. Coach, your second year as head coach at Nolansville for the volleyball team, and we talked about this last year, obviously you're a guy uh, that's had a lot of experience uh, coaching. This isn't your first rodeo coaching, uh, but certainly your two years as head coach at Nolansville. Uh, where do you go from here, Matt? I mean, uh, two years as head coach, two state titles. Uh, there's some, anything else is going to seem like a bummer. Well, I'd rather have that than, uh, you know, than, than, a, than a, some huge rebuilding thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I try to consider myself a, a fairly intelligent person. I knew uh, that this was a talented group. It's not like, you know, here I come and, and, and we were going to be a 500 club and all of a sudden, boom, back-to-back -back state title. So, you know, we, we, uh, we're, we're, I'm blessed to get to coach uh, such a, a good group of kids who are phenomenal volleyball players. So, uh, you know, this team, uh, the two years before I'd gotten there had, gone to back-to-back sub-states, came up a little bit short uh, in that, you know, the 2017, I think we went to Portland uh, and lost. That would have been Lauren's uh, freshman year. Uh, uh, their sophomore year uh, got to host a sub-state game against Camden. So, again, they, you know, this program was one step short 
for two years in a row. So it wasn't like some miracle working uh, happened. Um, you know, I like to think that that what I brought was just some stability. Uh, I knew so many of the girls from, you know, I had the, the opportunity to coach them uh, at, at Mill Creek for a year or two. And it, it, it was a, a pretty uh, smooth transition. They knew me, I knew them. And, uh, you know, we, we've been able just to, to really build something really special here. And, and again, uh, you're going to hear me say it so many times, Lauren and those other four seniors had such a huge part in that because they just do what you're supposed to do. And that's, that's play volleyball and, and lead their team in really every aspect of, of everything that we do. And, uh, you know, I'm super happy for them and proud of them. And yes, now we've got something to uphold as we, you know, continue on in our, our programs, what still is a pretty young, uh, you know, situation going to, you know, just now, you know, in year five. So, uh, really excited to see what the future holds for us as we move into some different landscapes, uh, you know, moving up to AAA and finding some different, uh, you know, district opponents uh, here very soon. Well, and coach, it's pretty obvious, and uh, Lauren, uh, that your chemistry, uh, the players, the chemistry just seems so great. Uh, the interaction between coach and player, because, you know, those are the things that I like to watch. I'm a former coach, so uh, I kind of watch coaches and what they do. And it's pretty obvious that it's a pretty special relationship, not only amongst the players, but amongst the coaches, the coaches with the players. Uh, that's obviously a big part of your success. Lauren, I thought this was pretty neat. I was reading some of your comments in the paper, and you were talking about the seniors, yourself, Charlie Fulton, Cayman Ladd, Jasmine Jenkins, Avery Patton, and you dubbed that group the Fab Five, which I thought was pretty neat. Do, do you know anything about the Fab Five in Michigan basketball? Do you know, do you know anything about that? Um, I do not, but the Fab Five <laughs> which, which, is, which is great. So this, this was a basketball team in the early 90s. It was five freshmen. They came in and they called themselves the Fab Five. So when I read that, I had a flashback to that time. But talk about the Fab Five and how that came about with that name. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really create the name. It had been said before by like, I'm pretty sure Coach Young and I think um, our assistant like Coach Joy and um, Coach Childs. And uh, it just kind of became a thing that we joked about in the locker room. And then after the state championship, uh, we were just laughing because we were like, all right, Fab Five is out, like that's it. And so when we were getting interviewed, we just thought it'd be funny to throw that in there. So. I love that. I definitely love that when I read it. I bet Coach Young, knew about uh, Michigan and the Fab Five for sure. Coach, talk about what that group has meant, not only to you personally, uh, but also the program in general. Um, we'd need another show probably to, you know, to really do it justice because you always dream as a coach to have great senior leadership or last year, great junior leadership. And, you know, I can't express enough how, just how much that group, that Fab Five group, uh, meant to us in really everything we do, uh, from the way we practice, from the way they treat each other. Um, you know, you hear so much about uh, divisions in a team and clicks here and there, and, and nothing's ever perfect, but this group of five, they, they just did things the right way. And, and I never really had to worry about, um, you know, who's talking about whom or, or uh, you know, is somebody, you know, hazing this kid or is this freshman getting treated poorly? Um, you know, it, it's, it's cliche, but it, it, they, they did such a good job of being sort of the leaders of our family, uh, of our volleyball family. And then when you look at what they did on the court, I mean, it's not like it's just five, you know, good girls who just happen to be on the team. You know, they were five of our best players. Um, it, just an amazing uh, run that they had really over all four years, but specifically these last two. And, uh, you know, I, I could go on and on because uh, they're going to be super hard to, to replace. I don't even like thinking about it. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that they, again, have set such a strong foundation that I do think that we're going to have the opportunity to continue to be successful in volleyball. Uh, it's just going to have a, it's going to have a lot different feel to it. And, you know, new kids are going to have to step up into those leadership roles for sure. So uh, just beyond proud of what they've done. Well, it's obvious in listening to you and talking with you before, uh, you, 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 it's pretty obvious what that group means, again, not only to you, but the program in general. Now, your journey to the state championship really 
uh, you weren't challenged a ton during the year. Uh, your only losses to AAA teams, in fact, Coach and I were talking about this before we came on air, 38 and four during the year, undefeated against AA teams. The four losses to the top three teams in AAA, Brentwood twice, Houston and Siegel, and you guys actually beat those teams three times. So uh, I credit you, you guys and Coach Young in particular uh, for making sure that you had the opportunity to play that competition during the year because uh, obviously it, it made you better. Lauren, here's a question I have for you. Was it tough at times during the year? Obviously, you guys did a great job. You went undefeated. But you know how it is as a player. You look at the schedule and go, okay, we've got this team coming up. Let's just get through it. We're obviously going to win. It's not a team that's going to challenge us. You know, how do you go about dealing with that? Because that's a reality. I know as coaches, we like to say every game's the same. It's important. But you can't trick you guys. You know. You know the difference. Uh, you know the difference between Brentwood and someone else. So talk about that, how you guys went about getting up for those matches that maybe you knew going in, unless something very, very strange happened, you were going to come out on top. I think um... – one of our mottos like throughout the whole year was never like never settle really. And um, it's just, it was the way we practiced really. I could credit it to because the way we practiced is we practice like our team. Um, you know, we communicated even like when we knew the next day, like we were going to go play somewhere maybe an hour and a half away. And it wasn't a team that was like, you know, particularly going to beat us, but, and it's not, it's not a Brentwood. But I think our whole thing was just play our game, play Nolensville volleyball. And um, I really think we stuck to that like this whole year because we really didn't lose that many sets. And it's it's very easy to, um, you know, play at the same level as the team you're playing. So like drop down to somebody else's level. And I, I really can't recall a time we ever did that. And we did rise up to someone else's level when we had to. So I think we were just really great at being flexible with the people we were playing. and. Um, you know, just making sure we were playing our game and not settling for anybody else's. Well, obviously it worked out and you guys did a great job of doing that. And coach and listen to Lauren talk, I can see what you're talking about with uh, the leadership and uh, because, you know, you, she, Lauren, you talk the way you're supposed to talk as a leader. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty impressive listening to you speak about the season and your team. Coach, talk about those AAA teams and your philosophy and scheduling. Again, I know we talked about this uh, last year as well, but remind our viewers sort of your philosophy and maybe not settling for let's just play people in the double A level. Uh, let's try to win every single match. You really created a schedule and put you in some situations where you were, were going to be pushed and let's face it, had some opportunities to lose. Now you only did four times, but uh, that was on purpose, right? No, we, we it's similar to last year. We have to challenge ourselves uh, out of district um, you know, we're, we're in an area where there's not many double-A teams around here. You know, you can get into uh, into Metro Nashville. Um, of course, they really struggled with even starting their season. Hume Fogg was a team that comes to my mind that was a stake tournament caliber team that I think got to play one match this year. Um, so we have to we have to step our out-of-conference schedule up. We tried to do at least once a week with a Brentwood or a Ravenwood. We played Franklin. Uh, played Page, played Siegel, uh, and then we were able to, on some of our weekends, and that's a thing that was different this year. You know, you have the opportunity to play up to four different weekend tournaments. Well, you know, with our situation with COVID and, and not really being able to uh, do as much travel maybe as we'd like to, we had a, uh, we had a big tournament to cancel that we were gonna, you know, going to Chattanooga, uh, playing Baylor and some of those teams were really strong. Um, we had an early season uh, tournament that had to get canceled, but we had two weekends right in the middle of September where we went over to Brentwood uh, on a Saturday. It was us, Brentwood, Cookville, who's a state tournament team, Houston, who we've already talked about. Um, we saw Central Magnet, uh, who, you know, did a phenomenal job in, in our district this year, ended up coming in third in the state uh, in double A. And, uh, you know, we got to play five times on that one Saturday against unbelievably talented teams and then came back the next weekend uh, in a local tournament that Summit and Siegel put on uh, and out of a 32 team field were able to get to the finals uh, where I think we again we uh, beat uh, Cookville beat Houston 
um, caught Brentwood in the in the finals in a phenomenal three set match where they I think they beat a 17 15 if I'm not mistaken uh, in the in the last set where you know th that's what we needed to do uh, we, we knew that if we didn't challenge ourselves that you know you don't want to have that slip up at the wrong time because in the postseason one off night can end it and uh, you know that's that's why we had the philosophy that we had and we're I said it every every year, anytime I get asked, well, we're in the best volleyball county in the state of Tennessee. I don't even think it's that close, really. Um, so to not step up and challenge yourself and play some of those teams would be silly, in my opinion. So that's why our schedule was what it was. And and to be able to go through it, and as you said, uh, only lose four times, again, is a testament to our girls and, and, uh, and how well they prepared for the season. And coach, you know, talking about how strong the county is, I had the pleasure of going out and watching the middle school championship, uh, your feeder school there, Mill Creek, uh, with a win over over Brentwood in the championship game. And obviously the cupboard's not bare when you look at some of those players coming up into your program. You know, and I made the comment at the time, and you don't have to respond to this, so you may have a competitor end up watching this. I felt like th those middle school teams would have won the Metro Nashville district. Again, we'll just leave that hanging there. Uh, but I, when I watched, I'm like, they, they would win. They would win those districts, at least in my opinion. Uh, Lauren, let me ask you this. So postseason, you guys obviously cruised during the regular season in AA. Uh, you win the district and region championships with wins both times over Murfreesboro Central Magnet. Uh, you defeat Creekwood in the sectional. Again, 3-0 in that particular match. Now it's state tournament time. Did it almost feel like a relief that with all the things we had going on with COVID and quarantines and high expectations, once you got to the state tournament, was it almost like, oh gosh, we can breathe now. Let's, we've made it to this level. It's going to be all about our playing now. And we don't necessarily have to worry about uh, someone being put out for the tournament. Cause I know that was a concern for you guys during the year. And by the way, a concern for me as well. Um, yes, so COVID was definitely a factor all year. I mean, from the very first practice, we knew it was something, you know, that was going on. And Coach Young consistently reminded us, like, yes, it's something that's going on, but I want y'all to focus on volleyball and I'll focus on the rest. So, um, you know, I mean, of course, you come home and you hear about kids getting quarantined and our team was effective. We had a couple girls, you know, who were out for a couple games and that hurt us, but I think what kept us going and, you know, we kept getting wins um, was because we did, we just focused on the volleyball. And I think, so by the time we got to the state tournament, we were so locked in and we were so, you know, just kind of put on our blinders to the outside world. And we were just like, we're just going to go get this. And then, you know, COVID after, you know, I can worry about it then, but I was, I was really just focused on getting to that end goal. And I think we just kind of kept reminding the leaders on the team and like the seniors, especially, since this is our last year, we just kept reminding them, like, don't give this up. Like, don't, you know, give in to all these rumors and all the quarantine stuff. Like, if you're quarantined, go get through it and then come back and be just as strong. And our players did. And I think we just really rallied and we made it all the way to the end. And it was a relief, but also just like such, such a proud moment for my team. So. Coach, I know you had to be walking on eggshells a little bit too. I know uh, from my standpoint, obviously I don't want to see, anything happened to any of our teams, you know, where you end up getting put out of the tournament and you really weren't at full strength. But I'll be honest about this. Teams like yours, teams like Brent Woods, I think I'm a little more nervous because, you know, as a coach, you know those years when you have real special teams with real special chances and you know there are other teams where it's just a matter of time where the season's over. Again, you don't want anyone to be put out. But uh, you certainly don't want our best representatives, a team that's so strong like your team, uh, with, a, with an opportunity to be put out by something like COVID or people being quarantined. So talk about kind of what your mindset was. I know you uh, told Lauren, she just, she just let us know that she said, hey, you guys focus on playing. Let me focus on this other stuff. Talk about that a little bit and how that had to be a little nerve wracking for you during the season. Well, I think the biggest thing about it is as we transitioned, you know, from summertime to starting, you know, school online and then getting the kids back into the building, it sort of became, 
it was almost a deal where, you know, at first we're all nervous. I hope nobody catches COVID. And then it, it became, I hope I don't sit beside a guy or girl that, that ends up having it. So it, it was almost a, a tough situation for the kids because it wasn't something that they were doing wrong. You know, we've had kids at our school that have gotten quarantined and it's simply who'd you happen to sit by that ended up testing positive. So it's a, you know, it's, it's, it is, it's something you, you kind of lose some sleep over and, you know, the, the, the couple of instances that Lauren mentioned that we had this year, you know, it, it, it wasn't a situation where any of these kids did anything incorrectly. It, it just was a luck of the draw type thing, which is probably even more frustrating. So to be able to get to the end of our season, to have as limited amount of disruptance, uh, you know, disruptive, I can't say that word, uh, you know, we were, we were really fortunate. And, um, you know, there's, there, there's some teams that, that weren't as fortunate uh, and, and you really do hate it for them, um, you know, but at the same time, we were, uh, we, we were just trying our best to make it through. And, th and that did make it tough. It's one thing to have to worry about, you know, who you're beating on the volleyball court. And then it's another thing to have to then worry about how do you even get to the, <laughs> the game or match that you have that afternoon without getting a letter from the health department. So um, it, it even made it, I think, a little bit sweeter, kind of like Lauren said, when that last point goes down, uh, and in my mind, I can see uh, Lauren making a dig and Avery set and Jasmine and that last ball going down. It was so many emotions wrapped up into one. It was obviously just absolute. I mean, it's hard to describe that feeling. You wish you could bottle it up because, you know, it's, it's like five or 10 seconds of euphoria. And I see the kids in the dog pile and I ain't worried about COVID for that five or 10 seconds. And you're just, and at the same time, it's just relief that, you know, we made it through this crazy season um and i think that's the biggest thing i'll take there's a uh i, I should have made it my backdrop there's a photograph of our team but of lauren in particular and i think it's right at the last point and i mean lauren's in a pose of just she's jumped in the air you know head back hands up and it's just a i mean i'd like to make it a poster it's the most euphoric moment uh, that, I, that i think you know they always say a picture's a picture's worth a thousand words that one would be worth 50,000 because you could write a whole book about this entire season I think off that one picture and uh, just a phenomenal experience and like I said uh, just so glad that I got the chance to, to, to be along for the ride with these kids on it because it was great. All right now let's talk about the state tournament so the draw comes out uh, uh, not sure how you felt about the draw but you start off with Signal Mountain 3-0 uh, Crockett County 3-0 Anderson County 3-0 and then you're moving into the state championship game again uh, with Anderson County. You end up winning in four sets, 25-19, 25-15. You drop the third set, 25-20, and then you come back and win the fourth set, 25-20. Coach, talk about getting to that, win going through the winner's bracket versus if you would have lost that match to Anderson County, I'm talking match three now. Talk about the difference maybe physically and mentally for them having to go up back and play some more just to get a chance to play you again. Is that a, a place that makes a big difference? Does it really not make a difference? Uh, or was that something you were really focused on? Let's try to get here where someone's got to come back and play some additional matches just to get back to us. Right. Well, I think the biggest thing when I look at the way the bracket's set up and I, and I you know, thought the same thing last year, winning those first two are absolutely huge. Because then even if you get to that third, for example, where we, you know, where us and Anderson County were in that winner's bracket final, you know, we actually had to take the route that Anderson County did this year. We, we lost last year in the winner's bracket final to Portland. And yes, you do then have to put yourself at risk and play that one more match. But by winning those first two, you pretty much give yourself two chances to get to that, that, that final match. And, uh, Yes, in my opinion, I don't see any any way that losing that third match or losing that one is any benefit. Um, you know, we, we wanted to win every time we go out there. But also, our kids were smart enough to know that, hey, we're 3-0, and but the way this bracket's set up, when we get to Friday, it's a winner-take-all deal. You know, they're not going to have to beat us twice. It's not a uh, what you would think of as a true double elimination. When you get to the finals, it's winner-take-all. And um, I like the way we did it this year. Um, I still think that, uh, you know, the confidence we had, we had seen Anderson County twice because we'd also seen them back in a, uh, one of the tournaments that I talked about uh, during the regular season. 
and I think we, we just were confident. Um, I think one of the biggest things I saw when we lost that third set in the championship, uh, it's the first set we had lost in, a, in, a, in several weeks. And I just remember looking at the girls and, and the look in their eyes, I knew we were winning that fourth set. Um, you know, they're due a slip up from time to time. I mean, we had played pretty much just flawless for about three or four weeks in a row. And that one little, you know, I think we went, we were up 15, 10 in that third set. And, uh, you know, they went on about a 11 or 12 out of 13 type point run. And it's really the first time in, in a month that we had sort of given up uh, just, you know, sort of a run that we weren't comfortable with at all. Um, so, yeah, that was the biggest thing is uh, you win those first two, you put yourself in a great position and, uh, you know, it, it's just like this team to, to not play as well as they can that third set, but then to turn it right back on and, and, and get back on track in the fourth set. And, uh, you know, we stayed confident all the way through that match. Well, you could see it where I was sitting, exactly what you just described. Uh, in no way uh, did it look like you guys were going to give up that four set. In fact, the opposite happened. Like you said, you, you really dialed it up. Lauren, when I look at those stats from the championship, again, you were named championship match MVP. You had 32 digs, Avery Young 11, Charlie Fulton 10. You talk about kills, Jasmine Jenkins 12, Maggie Rickard 11, Charlie Fulton 9, Cayman Ladd and Avery Young both with eight assists, Avery Patton 25, Caroline Johnston 16. What stands out to me when I read through that is how well-rounded your team is. I mean, it's a team that obviously has some great individuals. Uh, you know, you think about Brentwood, you think about the first thing you think about is Eggleston. With your team, depending on who you're talking to, a different player might be named. So talk about the importance and uh, of your team being that well-rounded. Um, yeah, I think we really pride ourselves in that, uh, our well-roundedness and like our depth in that team is incredible. Um, like going back even to the COVID thing, like when we did have girls out, I mean, so many girls just stepped up because we're so well-rounded. And I think we're like that because like during practices and during games, we build each other up. I don't think there's any selfishness on our team. It's all selfless for sure. Um, the girls who maybe don't play as much like our bench, I mean, I've never heard someone cheer so loud. Um, and when girls like, you know, are on the court, we just all kind of bring each other up. There's a lot of positive feedback. There's really not a lot of negative feedback that comes from us on the court. And um, I think also our coaches really helped with that. They kind of brought us together, especially more this year, since we had to deal with so many other things going on around us. I think we honestly became closer because of that. And so that feeds into like the skill level of our girls. I really think it does because, you know, during practices we're supporting each other. If someone's having an off day, I mean, we would support them. And that's why our depth and just our well-roundedness was so great this year. Lauren, a couple more questions for you before we wrap up. Tell me what your mindset was when you guys lost that third set in the championship against Anderson County. What, what were your thoughts? Um, I mean, I definitely wanted to go off with a sweep, uh, but after we had lost that third set, I mean, I knew, I knew that we were going to come back, especially the five seniors. I think from right off the bat, we were ready. I mean, we had been in that situation before and, um, we just, we, we knew, I mean, it was just something in me. I was in, as like a leader on that team, we just kind of rallied together. We huddled up after that third set and we were like, that's not how we play. That's that's not Nolensville volleyball. That's not what we've been training for all year. Like that's, we're not going to go out like that. And so I think that fourth set, it's all about starting strong. Also, that's one of our big things um, that we were trying to focus on this year. And we did, we started that fourth, fourth set very strong. And um, I think we just fed off of that. And uh, yeah, we just went from there and it, it was amazing. Lauren, what about next year? What are your plans for next year? So that's, yes, so next year, um, I have decided that I'm not going to be playing college volleyball. So next year, um, I've applied to a couple big schools. There's like Knoxville, Chapel Hill, and I think I'm uh, going to be majoring in sports communications. So definitely keeping up with sports because that's my whole life. I love all sports, um, like football, all of it, basketball. I mean, I could tell you anything about any sport, really, so that's what I'm planning on majoring in, and um, we'll just see where it goes from there. 
Warren, well, you may be able to help out with the Wilco's now. I may, I may have another reporter uh, who could work the red carpet here. This is great. <laughs> totally. That's what I'm kind of looking for. <laughs> we can talk about that off air. Okay. Young, how about your team? Tell me about uh, going forward. I mean, obviously, we're still relishing in this state championship, uh, but talk about Nolensville volleyball moving forward. Right. Well, like I said, we're, we're going to miss these five. Uh, I mean, I, I say I'm not an emotional guy. I'm a pretty emotional guy, uh, not from like a, you know, can't keep it together sense. And I know right after uh, we kind of had that euphoria of, you know, hoisting the trophy and, and we get together in that, that huddle and you're kind of, you're not wanting to think about it, but I'm looking at these kids and I'm looking at Lauren, I'm looking at Charlie and Cayman and Jasmine and AP and, and, and I realized, you know, I'm, I'm going to see these kids again, but this is my last some huddle with these guys. And it took me about 20 seconds to sort of, you know, get any words out. Uh, you know, I wasn't boohooing or anything, but, you know, I think uh, I hope they know how much I love them and how, and how I, uh, you know, how I view them and, and what they've done for our school and our volleyball team. And just for, for me as a coach uh, to get to coach them, you know, we, I think we're going to be in good shape. Uh, you know, we, you know, we lose Cayman and, and Jasmine, uh, but we've got, you know, two middles that are uh, Madeline McNeely and uh, Maggie Allred, who are sophomore and freshmen that are going to step in and I think do a really good job. Um, Lauren is, is, is close to as an irreplaceable player as that we have, but you have Mamie Guthrie, who's uh, already committed to play at a, at a school and is going to do a phenomenal job and, do her best to step into Lauren's shoes. She's been a standout for us for three years. Um, you know, Charlie's moving on, but, you know, Avery and Maggie will, will hold down those, those outside spots. And, and I know, you know, they're battle tested kids as well. And, uh, you know, Avery Patton's a kid that such an emotional leader for us and has done such a good job setting, but Caroline's been there for a couple of years. Ellie Tant's going to step in and, and we've got kids that are going to want to push those kids as well. So, you know, the cupboard's not bare. I'm not going to be, you know, oh, poor pitiful us. Uh, I know how much we're going to miss those five kids, but I also know that that Nolan's with Volleyball's life will continue on and, and it'll be our job to, to make it as successful as we can. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to what the future holds. And at the same time, uh, th these five kids are going to forever hold a place in my heart. Uh, I've been coaching a long time. And one of the things I told this team, and it wasn't coach speak, uh, I told him our last practice, I told him right before we took the court in that championship match, I looked him in the eye and I simply said, you know, you're the best team I've ever coached. Um, and that's over a 25 year career in a lot of different sports. So um, they mean a lot to me and uh, um, I hope they come back and see us uh, every chance they get. But at the same time, uh, you know, we know that, you know, the season will open up next year and we're going to put a team out there and we're going to feel pretty good about it, I think. Well, Lauren can be proud, and I know, Coach, you are too. You certainly uh, put Nolansville Volleyball on the map and a program that's going to be around for a long, long time. I appreciate both of you guys being with us today, talking the Nolansville Volleyball State Championship, again, back-to-back -back state championships. Thank you for joining us for the Coach's Show. We'll see you next time.